paragraph 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 12, number 84. And here we were given some data about age and height, and we were asked to figure out, well, what is the independent and dependent variable? And, and really, your height depends on how old you are, right? So I, I wrote that here, height depends on age. So I'm going to have height be my dependent variable, and then age is independent. And that that's just true of life. Like, you keep getting older, regardless of if you want to or not. You don't really have a choice in that. So uh, the next thing it said was, hey, go ahead and make a scatter plot. So you can see here, I did this on my Mac. I have age. There's one of my numerical variables and its units, years, on the x-axis. And then I have my dependent or my response variable, height, and its units, centimeters, on the y. And you see I've labeled it. And I, I can't really do that exactly on my TI-84, but you, you see me trying to do that. I put age here and height here. I added that in later. But this is pretty much the graph-ish that you would get um, if you were doing that on your TI-84. And I'll flip over to my TI-84 at the end of this, or at least the app version of it, to show you how, how you can do that. And it says, does it appear from inspection that there's a relationship? And just looking at it, to me, if I look at this, that, that looks pretty good. That looks like a linear relationship. It's definitely a positive linear relationship. I'll go assess how strong that relationship is in a little bit, but I, I think that's okay. And then as I start to move forward, it says, hey, can you get the LSRL? And if you're a statistician, you always want it in the form A plus BX. Now, just to as a note, you have linear regression A plus BX in your calculator. You also have it as AX plus B. And this one, this option is stat calc 4. That's the option that you tend to use in a math class, not a stats class. So we do it the stats way, not the math way. So there's my, my numbers. And let me, again, just erase my little scribbles, all right? And you can see, and I'll, I'll change the highlighter color, here is my y-intercept and here is my slope. And you see me transferring those into my LSRL. And things to take note are, well, I didn't use x and y here, right? I have a y and I have an x in my calculator output, but I replaced the context, age, for my x variable and height for my y variable. And then you see I put my predicting hat over there. And this is literally what the LS... RL is. It's a line. That's what that last L stands for. It's the least squares regression line. And then part E says, hey, can you get the correlation coefficient? And you can see the correlation coefficient right here. Now they ask you, is it significant? That actually, that, that term, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle this, that comes into play. That, that actually means something in stats, and we'll start getting to that in chapter nine. So if you don't know what significance is, um, we'll get to it in chapter nine, but you can just say like, hey, it's pretty close to one, so it's looking good. And then the next part says, hey, can you go ahead and use that predicting line to predict for a, a person that is one year old and a person that's 11 years old? And so since one and 11 are age values, I'm gonna plug them in for age. So you see me plugging in one and 11. And then these numbers that I get back out, they must be height values because we're talking about how tall somebody is. So you see me labeling my numbers with the correct units, All right? And so then the next part says, hey, does the line appear to be uh, a good fit? Now in our class, we have three options or three factors that go into this. You wanna look at the original scatter plot you want to look at your R, and then you want to look at your residual plot. Now, there are more factors that could go into this, but these are the three that we will look at. And when I looked at my original scatter plot, right, that thing did look linear. And we just mentioned that our R value, right, that was pretty close to one. It was strong. And then the next thing, and the most important thing we need to check, is the residual plot. And I will go through and show you how to make the residual plot. But basically, instead of L1 against L2, you default to your resids, right? You change that Y list to resids. And again, you must have gone through linear regression. If you haven't done that, this won't work. When I graph this, I have the same X variable, but now instead of graphing the Y values, I'm not graphing anyone's heights, I'm graphing residuals, you can see a curved pattern in here. So what that's telling us is there's actually a better regression model out there. Maybe it's quadratic, maybe it's exponential, but there's something better out there and we wanna look for it. 
And then they ask us about outliers. So outliers have to do with how large your residuals are. And to actually go get the residual value, what you do is you, after you've run regression, and again, when I say regression, that means you've done the stat calc eight L1, L2 shenanigans, right? You have something that you've dropped into your Y1. And I'm gonna go through all of this in a moment. But once you've done that, what you need to do next is you need to go to L3 and define it to be your residuals. And as long as you have something in your Y1, this will auto-populate, all right? And then the fun really kicks in. Then what you get to do is you have to go to this new part of your calculator and you have to run linear regression t-test and look for this S value. This number here, this is your average residual length. And what we did for outliers in terms of regressions is if you wanna build your safety zone, you need to take negative two times that S value and two times that S value. And whatever that is, that becomes your safety zone. So if you look at this, this was about 8.438. If I double that, that is 16.86. So my safety zone for this problem is negative 16.876 to positive 16.876. That is my safety zone. All right, and then what I do is I look at these numbers that are in L3 and I see if they fit in there, all right? Negative 14.29, it's in there. 4.522, it's in there. And as I go through this, all of them wind up being in there because my largest residual was that first value. So I have no outliers. Okay, great. Then they ask us again, hey, can you go ahead and predict for a 62-year-old man? Now, keep in mind, your initial data only went from 0 to 14. So you are hugely extrapolating here, right? This is a huge example of extrapolation. Look how tall this person is. I don't know exactly how long or how tall 504, five centimeters is, but I think it's like 17 or 18 feet, right? And oh, I actually, JK, I did look at it. It looks like it was about 17 feet tall. So this is huge extrapolation. And then it says, the last question says, what was the slope? Well, if we go back up here, all right, give me a moment. Here was my slope, all right? And so that's what I'm putting my slope. And I have that template, right? For every one unit increase in your X variable, the predicted average either increase or decrease in your Y variable is your slope. So our X variable, in this case, it was age and the units were years. So for every one year older, some kid got, his predicted average height, that was the y variable. Now it increased because the slope was positive and it increased by about 7.1 centimeters. So that means every year this kid or these American kids, American boys are growing by about 7.1 centimeters. So now let me flip this over and just go run through this on my calculator. So the first thing I would do is put my data in my lists, which I have. I'm gonna go to my stat plot and if I take a look at it, it actually is set up right now. I've got the scatter plot, I've got L1, L2. If you're on your actual calculator, a physical calculator, hit zoom nine at this point. I have to hit graph and then zoom on the bottom left-hand corner and nine. And there I can at least see that scatter plot. Let's go get the LSRL. So I'm gonna hit stat, I'm gonna to go to calc. Now in the um, app that I'm using, it's stat calc nine. You can see in here it's five and nine that are the linear regressions. And the difference between them is whether you call A the slope or A the y-intercept. And we go with option nine, right? Where A is the y-intercept and B is the slope. So I'm gonna go here. We're gonna go L1 comma L2 comma Y1. And we get to Y1 the same way you do on your regular calculator. But you do wanna make sure you put the Y1 in there. Otherwise your residuals won't work. So let me go ahead and hit enter. And there you see my entire graph hanging, or my, my slope and my y-intercept hanging out. And now when I go back to my graph, you can actually see the LSRL kicking in, right? So I've got that happening. And if I want to calculate values for this, if I hit calc here, I could predict my value at one, right? You can see that the y value is 72.18. I think we were also predicting at 11. You can get 143. 0.1304, so we have all of that if we need it. All right, but the other thing I wanna work on is the residuals. So let me go over into L3, and I'm gonna hit second in stat, and we're gonna go into the resids. You see it right there. I'm gonna tap on the word resid, and then it's not gonna work. <laughs> let me try, oh, there. I'm sorry, I haven't done it in the app before. Let me clear this out. Let's try this again. So second in stat, I'm gonna hit resid. Hey, buddy, 
Maybe I have to do it with the little um, um, squigglies in. Let me try this one more time. Why won't it? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Sorry. You can see how often I use this app. I'm going to tell you all I did was I hit second resid and I hit enter just like I would on my regular calculator. I just needed to actually try it. So there we go. I can see all of my resids um, auto populating. If I wanted to make my residual plot, what I would do here is I would go change L2 over to my resids. And now when I hit graph, you can't quite see it again. I'm going to hit zoom nine. And then you can start to see that curved pattern with those residuals, right? There's this one down here and they go this way. All right, but let me go ahead and I want to change this back to my original scatter plot. So let me go back to L2. There we go. And then the next thing I want to show you is how you get that average residual length. So let's go back to our home screen, clear this out. We're going to go stat tests. Now somewhere in your calculator, and it, it really differs for like the TI-83s and the 84s and the 83 pluses, you need to find linear regression t-test. And in this app, you can see it's option F. So I'm going to hit F. All right. And then you can see I've got my X list in L1, my Y list in L2, my frequency of one. If I needed to adjust that, I could, but I don't need to. And you can see that residual of eight point, oops, I'll, I'll stop touching that. You can see the residual, the S value, the average residual length of 8.438, which is what I had on my paper before. And the cool thing about this app is it actually shows the, the physical residuals on the graph, right? It's dropping from the predicted value to, or I should say the actual data value to the predicted value, right? Actual minus predicted, actual minus predicted. So if I head back to my work, let me pull that up again. All of the stuff that you saw on these screens here when I was doing my physical calculator, it matched what I was doing before. All right, so if you have any questions, give me a shout. I hope that helped and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much.